Tindik TV KPM A very good afternoon. You are now watching Road to Success SPM 2021 together me, Sean Steven, as your host. Now, before we begin, again, I want to remind you to always follow the SOPs in place in our battle against COVID-19 to flatten the curve, such as wearing your face mask and when you wear it, make sure you wear it properly. It covers from the top of your nose all the way to the bottom of your chin. Also, wash your hands frequently with both water and soap and also don't forget to also use the hand sanitizers and when you're among other people make sure the distance between you and that person is at least one meter apart and as you know today's subject is of course english literature for the topic prose more specifically is sambal without anchovies huh very interesting topic indeed but before that let's take a look at the uh, profile for our teacher for today And with the slogan itself, be true to yourself, please put your hands together for Miss Gladys. Hi, Miss Gladys. Good afternoon. Hi, Sean. To you. It's evening. nice. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to be here again. <laughs> yes, yes. Wonderful indeed. Uh, maybe before we begin, you could kindly introduce yourself once again to our uh, audience for today. Okay, um, uh, I'm Gladys and I'm with the uh, District Education Department. I was a teacher for 25 years. I taught in various schools in Slango and KL before I joined the Education Department. Uh, the, Bangsa Pudu District Education Department, yeah. and I'm, I'm SISC School Improvement Specialist Coach. Ah, okay. So okay. before this, you've been teaching for 25 years. Yes. That's about my age. But before we continue, how about we go over to the table and <laughs> practice some SOPs? Are you sure you? it's about <laughs> your age? <laughs> before I could ask you, you've asked yeah, me so to. Yeah, that's a good way to, uh, to detect. I'm also going to, uh, don't mind me taking this as well. Got to make sure that our hands are always clean. And now that uh, we are uh, practicing our SOPs, or we practice some SOPs, and also the distance between you and me are definitely more than one meter apart. Now, yes. Today's topic is pros, more specifically, uh, sambal without anchovies. Uh, I know it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit difficult for me to comprehend because how can you have sambal without anchovies? But then again, well, I know this is a short story, so what's interesting about uh, a short story, or this, this uh, story okay, in particular? Um the, the students have to complete, uh, do this as part of the pro selection of short stories. Okay. What is interesting about this is that it is a short story written by our own local writer, Chua ah, Koki. Okay, yeah. okay and, and the part about how can we have sambal without anchovies, of course you can. Okay. And you will find out later and that is the main issue in the uh, short story itself. Oh, very intriguing <laughs> indeed. And I can't wait to find out more because I myself didn't have the opportunity to read this when I was taking my SPM or uh, even English literature itself. But uh, how about we take a short break? But before even that short break, we'll be actually watching a video uh, for the uh, views of the students who will be taking this subject for their SPM. So stay tuned. We'll be back to you for Road to Success, SPM 2021. DDT KPM. Hi, my name is Karina and to me, literature is a subject that branches out and touches many aspects in life while also giving us an insight as to how the society has progressed to this day. Learning with a whole class of talented peers has given me so many opportunities to really understand the pieces that I learn. London by William Blake, for example, is a poem that shows how society has progressed decades ago and to this day. A personal take from this would be that whether for better or worse, things change and so should we. This is Arunita and I'm going to be talking about my views on English literature for SPM. So first, we get to increase our critical thinking skills and maturity. I say this because we get to analyze characters and their perspectives. We also get to increase our creativity and communication skills. We get to read poems, short stories and a novel and we get to write our own too. And I think English literature is a very good subject to take for SPM because it did help increase my English language skills. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chloe and I really enjoy English literature because I feel that it's a subject that teaches us to become better people. Each short story, poem and drama have their own unique values to be taught to each reader. Take Minus by Rupert Owens, for example. This poem talks about the horrors and terrors of war and how many innocent civilians have died to protect their own country. 
Thus, it has also taught me to appreciate the freedom and safety that we have today and not take it for granted as innocent lives can die for our sakes. Thank you. TV KPM. TV KPM. And we are back for Road to Success SPM 2021 together me, Sean Steven and also Miss Gladys. For the subject, English Literature Prose, Sambal Without Anchovies. Uh, of course, it's not just the both of us today, right, Miss Gladys? We also yes, have our yes. special guests who are online with us today. Let's see who they are. Hi, good, uh, good evening. Yes. <laughs> oh, there we go. The... Uh, future of our generation, <laughs> our students who are online. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll be mentioning your names. All you need to do is just introduce yourself uh, when that happens. Also from the school that you are from. Because I believe they are from two different schools. So I'll let you do the introduction. We're going to start off first with Chanel. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Chanel Purines Baran and I'm from SMK Convent Central. Thank you very much, Chanel. And uh, next we have Ryan. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Ryan Zafri and I'm from SMK Amdin Bakri, Kuala Lumpur. Thank you. Next, we have Louis. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Louis and I'm from SMK Amdin Bakri. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Benny. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Benny and I'm from SMK Amdin Bakri. Thank you, Benny. Unfortunately, I can't see your handsome face because uh, you looks like you're somewhere in a dark room of some sort. Maybe you can you get to adjust your camera later on. But we're going to move on first to uh, Misha. Assalamu alaikum and salam sejahtera. I'm uh, Misha, could you put your microphone closer to your mouth? Yeah. Hello, can you hear? Uh, maybe you can speak a bit louder. Um, hello? Okay, yes. Please do I'm continue. Misha Ariana and I'm from SMK Aminuddin Baki. Thank you, Misha. And last but not least, we have Lalita. Oh, uh, wait, is that not your name? Okay, I think it's A. Uh, a no. Jesse. Yeah. Hi, my name is A. Jesse Anak Pumpan Pasunadan, and I'm from SMK Convent Center. All right, now that we have got to know our pupils, our friends who are online, let's begin our lesson for today. Over to you, Ms. Gladys. Okay, thank you, Sean. Right. Okay, I shall start. Okay, I shall start with introducing the section A because today we are doing prose. Okay, so I shall start with introducing section A, which is prose. And prose has four questions. Okay, so the first question will have two short stories, which is short story A and short story B. And you have the A question. Okay, the A question is actually on the uh, short story A. And the B question is on the short story B. Okay, okay. so uh, it, there are different types of questions. Uh, a question is an extract based question, you call it an excerpt or a passage, mm -hmm. but you have a particular uh, part taken from the story, and the question will be based on that. Okay. Whereas uh, question B is an S open question. Okay. okay, the same thing applies for question two as well, All but right. you have two different short stories. So uh, the students actually do six short stories, out of which four short stories will be coming out for prose. Ah, okay? okay, and then we go on to the next um, uh, question, which is question three, that is on the clay marble. The clay marble is actually a novel. Okay. Okay. The difference is that for the clay marble, both the A and the B questions will be from the novel itself. All right. Okay, and then we have the Lost King. Uh, the same thing applies for the, just like Clay Marble, both the questions will be from the Lost King. Okay. Okay, so basically this is how Section A of the prose paper is. And uh, you have uh, 15, uh, students are, uh, will be given 15 marks, maximum 15 marks for the A question and 20 marks for the B question. Okay. So all in all for this section, you get 35 marks. Ah. Okay, so right. that's the score and how basically it is. Now we go on to this, the next part, which is these are the six short stories which the students will have to do, okay, which you all have to do, the six short stories, compulsory. And today we'll be doing one of it, which is Sambal Without Anchovies. Okay. Now, what we are going to do this for this lesson today, we are going, I'm going to divide it into two parts. The first will be a quick revision of the story. Uh, I know you all are familiar with the story, so you have done the story, you have read the story. So let's have a quick revision, but my focus will be on the techniques of answering an A question. Okay. Okay, extract-based question. Okay. 
Now, for the quick revision, okay, I'm going to ask you some questions. Let's start with the first question. Okay, what is the gist of this story? Basically, what is this story about, eh, Jesse? Um, it is about a family of five which owns a nasi lemak stall, and after the death of the mother, there are some issues that they have to sort out. Yes, very good. Okay, the issues they have to sort out. Okay, so uh, what is the main issue that uh, seems to be causing the problem or which actually moves the, the plot along? Okay, Misha? Um, I think that the main issue of this story is that Pat Samad and his youngest son Hanif are constantly having differences of opinion. Uh, sorry, Misha, but uh, you somehow uh, your voice is somehow fading towards the end. Maybe you can put the mic even closer to your mouth and speak a bit louder, so I'm able to uh, so I'm um, able to hear you. Or maybe you could try removing your earphone, so maybe the audio from your phone or from your device is much clearer. You can give it a test. You can give it a try. Misha, yesterday you were fine. Probably you need to take your earphones off. Yeah. How about now? Could you try? Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, but you have to speak a bit more louder. Now? Can oh, you yes. Hear me now? <laughs> yes, that's loud and clear, Captain. Okay, what's the main issue, Misha? I think that the main issue of the story is that Pat Samad and his youngest son, Hanif, are constantly having differences of opinion. Yes, they are constantly having uh, disagreements. Okay, there is conflict between uh, Pat Samad and his son. Now, uh, let's go on. What is the cause of the conflict? Okay, what is the main cause of the conflict, Benny? Um, Hanif wants to make some changes to the stall, but his father does not agree. Yes, okay, Hanif wants to make some changes, but his father does not agree. Um, now, uh, what sort of uh, changes does Hanif want to make? Uh, uh, next, Chanel? Um, Hanif wants to change, wants to upgrade the stall and change the way the sambal is prepared, which is without the anchovies, as well as serve the nasi lemak without the banana leaf. Yes, these are the proposed changes. First is to upgrade the stall. He wanted to upgrade the stall. Next, he wanted to change uh, the way the nasi lemak is served. And finally, he wants to make sambal without anchovies. And of course, the father does not agree. Pasama does I, not agree. I agree with the father. How can you have sambal nasi lemak without the anchovies? <laughs> okay, no, mind. please do continue. I don't want to go okay. into another. <laughs> okay, yes. so, uh, so the father does not agree. Okay, so now let's go on to the next question. Okay, why does Hanif want to make those changes, you know, despite his father not agreeing and this causing a conflict between them? Why can't he just give up? You know, why does he want to make these changes? Ryan. Well, he wants the business to expand and not remain as a roadside stall. Plus, he also thinks his mother will be proud of his success. Yes, it is not only about the money part of it, okay? Although he is a businessman, mm -hmm. it has also got to do with he has memories of his mother. Okay. You know, working with his mother and he feels his mother will feel proud. And that's the reason why he wants to make those changes. Now, what about Pat Samat? Why does he oppose to the changes? Uh, Louis? I think Pak Samad doesn't agree to the changes because he's still holding on to memories associated with his late wife as the store and the way the nasi lemak is prepared have her touch and taste. Very, very good. Okay. So actually, if you look at it, they are both... He wants to make the changes because of his mother yep. and she, he doesn't want to make changes because of his wife. So they have got different ways of remembering uh, you know, he, his mother, and she, his wife. Yes. Okay, so basically they are both uh, focusing on the mother, mm -hmm. but they don't realize that. Okay, uh, but in different ways. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's move on. Now, I would like to pose this question to you. Okay. Okay, you yeah. sort of know the gist of the story, yes, right? Yes, yes, I do. So why do you think uh, the title, there's a kind of error, typo error here, why do you think the title is... Uh, uh, sambal without anchovies is significant. I think uh, it boils down to the uh, very um, meaning or the, the, the themes behind it itself. I mean, through, through what the, uh, our friends on online who have explained so far, uh, I believe that uh, sambal without anchovies uh, is basically the, the, the whole core towards this conflict that they have. I mean, the, um, Hanif wants to change the, the recipe because he wants to make his mom proud. I mean, he wants to elevate the business. At the same time, Pak Samad doesn't want to change that recipe because he wants to hold on to the memories of his wife. So that somehow encaptures 
the the whole the whole story. This is does that make sense? Well done, Sean. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well For someone who hasn't okay. read the book yet. Benny, would you like to add to that? To what Sean has said? Uh, in my opinion, I think yes. the title Samba Without Anchovies symbolizes something that's incomplete. Uh, as seen through the story, Hanif's family Nasi Lemak store is very successful, but there's something missing, which is Hanif's mother being not being there with them. So showing that showing that there's an incompleteness in their family. Thank you. Okay, he's taking one step wow, further. That, that's, that's Without the anchovy deep. showing the incomplete part of the family. Yes, yes. Yes, okay. This is this is what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to go beyond uh, you know, and analyze and infer from from what is given to us. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So we go on. Thank you. Thank you for Sean being for being such a sport and answering the question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, we go on. Now, what I would like you all to do is I would like you all to get hold of you. I'm sure you already have the text. This is the text. Okay, okay please uh, open to page 24 of your text and uh, look at the first the sentence which starts with Hanif and his father have another disagreement. And then it ends on page 25, much less to attack his father. So this is the extract that we are going to be looking at. Okay? okay, so this our our lesson today is going to be based on this. So those of you who are watching, please have this uh, extract. Take your book and look at this. Okay, we'll go on. Now, this is the question we are going to attempt. How does the writer make this scene such a significant moment in the story? Okay, so okay. we are only talking about this scene. What we, I showed you just now, the extract, the passage, we are only going to talk about this. How does he make it significant, uh, um, a significant moment in the story? Now, when you are given a question like this, how are you going to go about in answering this question? Okay, the first thing you have to do is unpack the question. Now, what do I mean by unpack the question? It's basically looking at keywords and looking at what is wanted of you. What are you supposed to do? So you have the word how, which is very important. It's an important keyword. And the other uh, phrase which is important is significant moment. Okay? So this is you are sort of unpacking the question and you are going to look at what is expected of you. Okay? What should you do? So how means what are the techniques used? And in this uh, extract, you know that there is conflict between Hanif and his father. So how is the conflict developed? Okay, how is language, structure, and form used to show the conflict, the development of the conflict? How is it used to show the characters? Okay, uh, so that is the how part which you will have to analyze. And when we talk about significant moment, what is meant by significant? Okay, when you say something is significant, it means that it's important. Okay, it's meaningful. It is revealing. Okay, so in this aspect, although you are focusing on the extract itself, you need to know the story. Why is it, uh, what does it reveal to you? Okay, so the background, the knowledge of the story is important. You need to know the story. And why? Why is it significant? This is what you will have to show in your essay. So unpacking the question is very important because it tells you what you need to know, what you need to do, and how you are going to go about answering the question. Okay? Okay. Do, we, uh, do I have time for the first slot? Shall I move on? Uh, yes, yes. I think we have okay. about uh, two or three minutes, so I think we can cover some of that first. Okay. So now we are going to look at the process. Now, you have unpacked the question. So now, what do you do next? The first step is read through the extract and identify the organi organization or the structure of the extract, okay? You have to see where do changes take place? Is there a turning point, okay? And this is something you need to identify. The second step is you need to read and identify words and phrases and then highlight them. Now, what words and phrases are you going to identify? These words must be relevant to the significant moment. It must be relevant how the writer is showing you uh, that moment is significant. So that is, these are the words you will have to identify and highlight. Now, step three, you go back to the extract, OK? You go back to the extract, you read the extract again, OK? And you identify 
which are the evidences that are not so important. Now you are going to filter. Earlier you sort of identified all the evidences. Now you go back to the extract, you go back to the question, you say, okay, these evidence, I'm not going to take it because they are important, but not as important as these. Because you have only about 25 minutes. You can't be putting in all the evidence, and then it will end up you don't have uh, enough time to analyze them all. So you have to take only the important ones, only the relevant ones. And finally, step four is you plan your essay with the assessment objectives in mind. Okay? What are the assessment objectives? We will be looking at them later. Okay? okay, and before we go on to the assessment objectives, how about we take a short break and be back to you for Road to Success SPM 2021. Stay tuned. KPM. KPM. And we are back for Road to Success SPM 2021. Together with me, Sean Stephen and Miss Gladys for the topic English Literature Prose Sambal Without Anchovies. All right, let's continue. Yes, thank you, Sean. We shall continue. Okay, now we go on to the next part. Okay, I, I, we, when we ended earlier, we talked about assessment objectives. You have to plan with the assessment objectives in mind. Okay. Now let's go back to this extract here. Okay, uh, HSC, when you look at this extract, okay, just look at it. Uh, by just looking at it, what can you say about this extract? You have not started reading it yet. By just looking at it, what can you say? How is the structure of the extract like? Okay, so I can see that there is narration, dialogue, narration, dialogue, and narration. Very the good. conversation and going back and forth. Yes, very good. Okay, you have narration, dialogue, narration, dialogue. You know, you have that. Now, you know that this is the general structure. Okay, there is narration and there is dialogue. Now, now we look at the narration. What is happening in the narration? Then we look at the dialogue. What's happening there? Okay, so if you look at the first part, um, when you look at this, you need to divide the extract into different sections. Okay? okay, dividing the extract into sections actually help you to focus on the different sections. And um, this is what I meant by uh, when when I said that you know um, you need to um, identify what's happening, what is the turning point. So you may ask, uh, you know, where do I draw the line? You know, how do I divide? That is when you look at uh, something else is happening. Okay, something has developed or something else has, is, is happening there. So these are the three, I've divided it into three sections. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is that the first section, which is the uh, narration part, that states what is the reason for the conflict. Okay, and the second part here, which is also on the same section, it talks about differences in views between Pasamat and uh, Hanif. And this causes the tension to build up, OK? And then we go on to the next section. And here, in this section, we have assumptions made. And what is interesting here is that you have narration again. But this time, the narration is different because we get to actually see what's going on in Hanif's head, OK? We don't get to know what's going on in Pasamat's head, but we get to know what's going on in Hanif's head. And we get to know that he makes assumptions. So that's what happens there. And we go on to this, this part here, and these assumptions causes him to, be, to get angry. And he accuses of his father of certain things, which, were really, uh, which is really unfair on his part. Yeah. Okay? And finally comes the guilt. Okay? I think we all go through that, right? You know, yeah. We suddenly flare up, and then yeah. we, get, you know, we think about it, and we feel so guilty. And so this is basically how the extract is. You can divide it. Okay? So this is what you all are supposed to do. Okay, divide it into sections and then find out what's happening there. This will help you later in planning your essay. Okay, now we go on. Now, the second part is you identify words and phrases which are relevant. Okay, you know the parts, so you identify. Now, as you can see, you just have to highlight them. They can be sentences, they can be words, they can be phrases. Okay, so this is how you do it. Now, okay. Now, after you have highlighted, you need to know your assessment objectives because you have to plan your essay with the assessment objectives in mind. 
Now, what are the assessment objectives? The first one is assessment objective one is to show in-depth knowledge of literary text supported by textual evidence. It basically means know your text. Okay. Okay, you need to know your text. You need to know what the words and phrases mean, you know, in that context. Second one is to explore text beyond surface meaning. Okay, I shall not, I think you all can read what is written there. I shall explain. Okay, basically this means you have to do analysis, you have to infer, you have to evaluate. Okay, just like the, the question I posed to you earlier on about the title. Yes. Okay, when you go deeper, when you peel deeper, mm -hmm. okay, then you find other things happening. Why? Okay, so the why is coming here for assessment objective two. As for assessment objective three, it has got to do with the writer. Okay, the literary devices the writer uses, the language the writer uses. So it is not merely identifying them and saying, the writer uses imagery, the writer uses uh, direct speech, but it is to say what is the effect of direct speech at that point? Okay, what is the effect of it? Why did he choose to uh, use direct speech and not mere narration? So you have to actually explain that. And finally comes uh, your AO4, that is to communicate an informed personal and critical response to literary texts. Okay, what does that mean? This is the overall presentation of your answer, your essay. How you view the entire question, how is your approach towards the question, and at the same time, how you connect it with what's happening in your life currently. Okay, so this sort of thing, it's, it's something that's happening currently or you connect it to, to your life, okay, your experiences. So that is your AO4. Okay. Okay, so we go on. Now, uh, then you look at this extract again, okay? okay? And this time, you, okay, let's say you had identified this, another disagreement, and then you had identified, uh, you know, sambal without anchovies, okay, for example, with, okay, unable to keep the sambal overnight, okay, suggests a change, okay, so suggests a change. Let's say you have identified some of these. Earlier I showed you how you identify. Now you look at it in the context of what you have written here, reason for conflict. You see whether it is relevant or not. If it is not so relevant, please take it away. Okay, remove it. Okay. Okay, so now you are going through, before you start writing the essay, <coughs> you are going to look at which evidence you are going to take and which you are going to omit. Okay, yeah. now we go on. Now, before we go on to this, I would like to ask you all, uh, do you all have any questions at this point? Anyone? Any questions? Yes, teacher. How's my, my audio now? Uh, your audio is slightly better. Is that the question you wanted to ask me, Misha? Oh, no. I was just checking. Um, sometimes I'm not too sure if I'm covering all the assessment objectives, like AO2 or AO3. How could I know for sure? Ah. That, that is indeed a very good question, okay? Yeah, I was because, about to ask that yeah, as well, because yeah. you know, you, uh, me as a student, I don't think so I'll be able to remember A01, A02 and all that. So how do we make sure that we cover all the, the important aspects? Exactly, that? and when you are writing something, you want to know, um, you know, is this A1, A01 or yeah. is it A02? Mm -hmm. Because these are the uh, assessment objectives and for the exam, you, uh, you will be, you know, assessed based on this. So it's important for you to know. So let's look at an example. Okay, I'm just taking the last part of the excerpt okay. where it says, uh, on his drive home, guilt gnaws at Hanif's heart. Okay, of course, you have all the others which tell you how guilty he feels, which emphasizes, but for the purpose of uh, showing how they differ, the assessment objectives differ, I'm going to just take one aspect there, which is just one word, that is gnaws. Okay, so the example evidence I've taken is guilt gnaws at Hanif's heart. And then I'm going to zoom in on one word and show how the AOs work. Okay, let's look at that. Now, here we have a table. Okay, there is a table here. Now, um, I've already explained what uh, a, the assessment objectives are, but the statements here refer to the four assessment objectives, but they are all jumbled up. Okay, what you, I would like you all to do is to try and match them. Okay, try and match, and then you will be able to see the differences. 
Okay, you will be able to see the differences between uh, among all these uh, assessment objectives. Okay, let's try with the first one. Okay, assessment objective one. Ah, Benny, now I can see your face. Okay, Benny, would you like to try assessment objective one? All right. Um, so I think the AO one is the writer shows how guilty Hanif feels when he says guilt gnaws at Hanif's heart. Ah, yes, correct. Okay. Why do you say that is assessment objective one, Benny? Uh, it is because it's taken directly from the text and it is the evidence. Yes, it is taken directly from the text. The writer shows how guilty, of course, you have added one uh, a little bit, but you, it, uh, you don't have to analyze to know that because it says guilt no. So that is AO1. So AO1 is basically evidence straight from the text. Okay. Okay. How about uh, the next one, which is um, AO2? Chanel, would you like to try that? Uh, yes, teacher. AO2 would be number four, which is Honey feels ashamed of the accusation he has made as he realizes that he has hurt his father's feelings and is remorseful. Okay, well done. Why, why do you say that is uh, AO4, Chanel? Uh, because the sentence analyzes what he felt and goes to infer that he was ashamed. Okay, very good. It goes beyond what is stated there. Okay. And it talks about the guilt. Okay, so that is AO2. Now let's look at AO3. Ryan, which is AO3, yes. Ryan? Yes, teacher. So AO3 is the use of personification on guilt with NOS enables us to visualize how Hanif's unkind words keep troubling him and this intensifies the guilt he feels. Very good. Okay, so this one here, this is the AO3. Okay, why do you say that is AO3? But it's because the focus is on the language used by the writer, which is the word NOS. Yes, it is on the language NOS, and it is also the technique that is personification that is used there. And uh, you don't just say personification is used there, you explain the effect of it as well. So okay. that is AO3. And of course, uh, what is left is AO4, the last one left. Louis, can you read it for us and explain to us why? Uh, AO4 would be, this reminds us to be careful of what we say, especially when we are angry, as words once said cannot be taken back. Why, why is that um, AO4, Luis? Uh, because the statement refers to our own experiences of saying things in anger. Very good. Okay, so now you can see how it connects. Okay, AO4 is to make a connection. So these are the, uh, how you go about uh, you know, identifying your AOs, uh, you know, your assessment objectives. Now, when you are writing the answer, it is, um, if you can see, what I have done is I've given different colors okay, for the different AOs. What I would suggest is that when you are writing your essays, please use different colors. Now you're doing online learning and all that, it's easier to type it out, use different colors. Because when you use different colors, you know that you're addressing all the four assessment objectives. Now, for a subject like literature, it may seem like so technical. It's like, you know, formula, like a maths formula. You have to do this, you have to do that, and all that. But let me tell you that uh, because the, um, you have to have all these four in your essay, you start writing, you start practicing, and make it a habit. Mm -hmm. Once it becomes a habit, you, it, will, you, it will come naturally to you. So for probably for the first four or five essays, you have to deliberately sit and consciously uh, you know, decide this is AO1, this is AO2, use colors and so on to ensure when you are practicing. But after a while, you will find that it is just the natural way you write. Yeah. Okay? Practice makes perfect, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, but for the examination itself for SPM, are we allowed to use different color pens uh, when we want to answer or is that... Just something that we do to practice and not It's really more, for, more of, for practice. For practice. Okay, huh? as I said, once it becomes a habit, yep. it comes naturally. So for the exam, they will be able to write it naturally. Oh, yes, of course. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we move on. Okay, now, now we come to the uh, structure of the essay itself. Okay, let's look at the structure of the essay itself. Uh, this is the, the traditional structure. You have the introduction, you have paragraphs, and you have the conclusion. Now, what do you do at the, uh, for the introduction? Okay, what you need to do is you need to explain briefly about the extract. Okay? okay? Explain briefly, like sort of summarize the extract, what the extract is about. And then you answer the question on its insignificance. Now, some students may ask, why do I 
actually need to have an introduction? What can I just dive in and answer the question? You know, an introduction is important because um, it enables you to, uh, you know, it forces you to think about what you're going to write. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it is good to have an introduction. And then uh, the paragraphs here, I have actually used um, my analysis earlier. OK, conflict, cause of conflict, and how tension builds up. All these now are put into different paragraphs. So they become the main idea of the paragraphs. Okay. So that is the reason why we need to divide and look at what's happening at the section. So these sections can be the paragraphs. OK, and finally comes to the conclusion. So this is the structure. Uh, do we, can we go on? Or yeah, we have we... a couple of minutes before we go. To yeah, break. OK, so we go on to the next, so the first paragraph. Sorry, we look at the sample introduction. Eh? OK, so how about before we go into that, because I see it's a pretty long paragraph. So yeah. uh, that's going to take some time. And I think I want to freshen up a bit before that. So we're going to take a short break and we'll be back to you for Road to Success, SPM 2021. KPM. KPM. And we are back for Road to Success, SPM 2021, together with me, Sean Stephen, and your teacher for today, Ms. Gladys. The topic, of course, is English literature. Let's continue. Okay, thank you, Sean. Now, we were talking about the structure of the essay. Okay, we have a very traditional structure here. Now, let's look at how you would write an introduction. Okay, this is a sample introduction. Okay, one thing I would like, I would call it a disclaimer. I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it, yep. but I'm suggesting that you do it this way. Okay. And you can practice it if you find that it's effective and you know it's easy to follow. All means go ahead and do it, okay? Because when it comes to writing of essay, everyone has their own way of doing it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I will explain why I would like, I think the introduction should be this way, simply because, okay, look, uh, the first part, which is in purple, the extract presents an argument between Hanif and his father over the changes to be made on the restaurant. Now, that is to explain briefly what the extract is about, okay? Yeah. So that is what the extract is about. And then... Um, you talk about the topic, I mean the question itself. You answer the question, okay? Now when you answer the question, basically you are telling the examiner or you are telling your teacher, what is it that you are going to talk about? Because you are answering the question. So it is significant because this scene vividly describes the conflict and tension that exists between the father and the son when the topic of change to the sambal is discussed. Okay, so you have actually answered the question and then you go on to talk about the tone and emotions are explored effectively through direct speech. Now, when you mention this, you are going to talk about direct speech, you are going to talk about narrative voice, you are going to talk about diction, which capture not only the tension of the moment, but the aftermath as well. So basically you are telling, um, you are going, you are analyzing, your AOs are coming in here. Yeah. Okay, so this is the introduction. Okay, now we go on to. Okay, we go on to paragraph one. Now we have uh, the cause of conflict and how the tension builds up. We have all the evidences there. Mm -hmm. Okay, the evidence are there. Now, how are we going to form the paragraph? Okay. Now, it's it is important that you start your paragraph with a sentence. Don't just jump in and start with evidence, okay? You have to say what this paragraph is about. And coming back again, going back to what we discussed earlier, when you divide the extract, you all have already identified what is going to be the main idea of the paragraph, okay? So the extract begins with hints of conflict, which is presented in direct, direct speech. So readers are directly engaged in the discussion. Okay, so you are talking about that portion, okay? And then you go on to talk about the evidence. So you start with your AO1 here. What does it show? Okay, this, uh, these evidence, okay? You choose one of the evidence, or you can even choose two, put them together, and say, what does it show? Okay, this suggests what? These are some of the phrases that you can use. This suggests, okay? And so that will be your AO1. Okay, and then you go on to, 
Okay, develop your response by identifying the technique. Okay, direct speech. Now, why? What is the effect of the direct speech? Okay, uh, uh, why is it used here for the disagreement? Now, when you have direct speech, you are immediately uh, thrown into the argument as well. You become someone who is a witness to the argument. Yeah. So, so that is what you can say. Okay, then analyze deeper the situation and the responses of the characters, what they are saying and their reasons for saying that. And finally, effect on the reader. This idea could be linked to, this is a phrase you could use, or you can say, as a reader, what I feel. Okay, and then finally, how is this significant to the concerns of the story? Now, you're coming back to the, to the title, I mean, the question again. The trick is this, sometimes you tend to, if, even if you go astray, when at the end of the paragraph, you come back to the question, you're also reminding yourself, ah, this is the question, I better not go astray kind yeah. of thing. Mm -hmm. So how is it significant? You must come back to that. Okay, so this is a suggested way of saying, the exchange of words describes vividly the reasons for and against changes to be made, which are important to the story. So you are relating to the changes which form the uh, main issue of the story. Okay, so this is paragraph one. Now we go on to paragraph two. It's also similar. You have your notes, you have your assumptions made. This is the main uh, idea, okay? The paragraph organization is the same, but what I would like you to look uh, focus here is connect to paragraph one. Okay, it is not like paragraph one is separate and then comes paragraph two. Yeah. There must be a flow in your essay, in your ideas. So you can use words such as these, consequently, as a result, however, depending on what you have stated there uh, in the earlier paragraph. Okay, so the discussion erupts and becomes charged. So again, a statement there for, uh, for the main idea. And then back to evidence. Your A01, what does this show? You can take, uh, you can take some or you can and discuss it or you can take a, a, a few which are connected. But of course, you're not going to have so many here. Yeah, that looks okay? like quite that a lot, lot. to cover. Yeah. Remember, you are supposed to reduce. This mm -hmm. is the reason why you are supposed to reduce, because otherwise you're going to have a lot. Okay, by looking at this here, you may find that, you know, this is important because he's always walking out of the, uh, you know, whenever there's a discussion. But rejection, dismisses this idea and all that, you may think it's not so important, you may cancel that out. But this one, cynical, sarcastic and patronizing, this is what he, assumption he makes of his father. Yeah. Okay, so that you may take. Okay, but you may not take this one here, that, you know, um, clueless kid and all that. Okay, I wanted to show you this because if you take everything, you will not have um, enough time to analyze. So you may want to drop some of the evidence there. And I think okay. also taking all the points right make you uh, somehow cover too much and also it's not really directed to a certain point, I think. Yes, yeah. that too, yes. It's not really focused. And Correct. then you have too much to say. Yeah. Yeah, so that is, you have to actually focus on why is it significant. Yeah. Now, this is significant because uh, most of the time he's assuming that is what his father is thinking. And he gets angry. And the walking away is insignificant because uh, you know that the father always walks away and there's no solution to, to the, their discussion. Yeah. Okay, so that's how you decide. Now, and, and again, the use of ac uh, actions instead of words reveals, okay, this is some, uh, some uh, way you can actually talk about the evidence. And then you develop your response by identifying the use of verbs and adjectives, cynical, sarcastic, verbs, shakes, smiles, and walks out. No words, just actions, uh, okay? And these words have negative connotation, okay? So how is the tone shown, okay? Is there an exclamation mark? Okay, if he's angry, is there an exclamation mark? So these are the things you need to do for your AO3. And then you analyze deeper Hanif's assumptions and the consequences. And finally, you have effect on the reader. And before you end your paragraph, what does this scene reveal? This, I'm not going to answer it for you all now because I've shown you the example in paragraph one. Okay, but perhaps you can think about, we get to see, um, you know, uh, that the fact that the father is always walking away, so there's no end, 
Okay, so that is an issue that you can talk about. Yeah. Okay. So now we go on to the paragraph three. Okay, the same thing actually, right? That's the same thing. You, you, you talk about, you have the main idea and then you talk about, uh, you know, you have your A, O, one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay, so we have covered until paragraph three. Uh, uh, do any of you have any questions on this paragraphs here? Uh, yes, teacher, I have a question. I noticed that for paragraph three, you started with A, O, two instead. Is that allowed? Oh, yes, uh, very observant of you, uh, Chanel. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, the thing is that when you are writing your essay, you need to have all your assessment objectives. Yeah. But the way you want to sequence them and order them, that is the way you write. It's uh, your creativity. As long as it makes sense. In, yes, in it makes also, sense. It's, it's all nice and, yes. and nicely structured. Yeah, so you can start with the AO2. I purposely put it there to see whether you all will be observant enough to catch that. Okay, so it's not always starting with an AO1. You can start with the AO2. You can start with the AO3. Okay, yeah. as long as all the assessment objectives are there. Okay, it doesn't matter which order because if I'm going to tell you this is the only way, then what is literature is about creativity and how you present your ideas. I can't actually tell you that this is the only sequence you're supposed to follow. Okay, that is curbing your creativity. Okay, let's go on to the conclusion. Okay, conclusion, go back to the question. Don't spend too much of time on the conclusion. One or two short sentences and wrap up your essay. Okay, but let's say if time does not permit, you can just stop at, uh, just have one line at the end of paragraph three and say that this is significant because, and you can end your essay. Okay, ah, if okay. time does not permit. Otherwise, it's good to have at least one or two lines for conclusion. And your conclusion will be, for this is an example, the excerpt is significant as it shows the reasons for conflict between Hanif and his father, which is a central idea in the story. We understand why the tension escalates each time and Hanif's feelings of helplessness in getting a response from his father. Okay, so we are basically discussed all this in your paragraphs. So you are basically restart, restating and summarizing what you have discussed. Okay, so we have come to the uh, entire essay. I've given you questions on how to answer and how to go about developing. Um, boys and girls, are you all clear on how to go about this? Okay. <laughs> now, Sean. Yes. Perhaps since, they, can... since they don't have any questions, I have questions for them instead. <laughs> ah, okay. All right. So actually, because we have all, all almost come to the end of our show for today, like just like uh, how you taught us for the essay itself, we have come to the conclusion part. And what we're going to do is we're going to recap on uh, all the things that Miss Gladys have actually mentioned to us. So we're just going to open the floor to uh, the students who are online right now to see, or maybe you can recap what uh, she has touched uh, so far for today. Who wants to start off first? Okay, I will start first Okay, sure. start the queue. Okay, the first thing you have to do when you're given the question, you have to unpack the question. <laughs> okay, now after unpacking, what's the next thing? Okay, over to you all. Uh, the first step would be to read through the excerpt at once. Okay. Okay. Read through the excerpt once. Okay. All right. All and then? right. And we divide it into sections. Dividing them into sections. Dividing them into sections. Okay. okay. Uh, and then when dividing, we need to understand the passage and how it develops. Okay. 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 How it develops. What is the purpose of the passage? Well done. Um, I think after that, you have to identify the relevant words or phrases or even sentences, which will be the AO1. Okay, very good. Identify relevant words and phrases and sentences, AO1. That's right, Chanel. And then after that, we have to plan the essay with the assessment objectives in mind. Very good. Okay. And the last step would be to eliminate minor evidences and then start writing. Okay, eliminate minor evidences and write your essay. There you go. Wonderful. <laughs> All right. And just to make a conclusion for that conclusion, maybe you have uh, maybe one special tip that you'd like to uh, mention to all those who are watching, not only online, but also at home, uh, how they can tackle this part of the question. Okay, I cannot um, stress this enough. Okay, um, if you want to do well, it's all about practice. And you have to develop your own style. Perhaps you can look at the way that this technique of doing it. Make sure your assessment objectives are addressed. 
But from there, with your practice, you will develop your own style of writing. Uh, it's all about practice and you will be fine. That's right. Enough Thank practice. you so much, Miss Gladys, as you heard from her. Uh, that's right. Practice makes perfect. Make sure you start practicing. And also, thank you so much, Miss Gladys, as well as our students who are online right now with us. And for those of you watching, hopefully this is beneficial to you and hopefully you can answer and also score for this paper, English Literature. Make sure you stay tuned to watch Road to Success SPM 2021 every day. And we'll see you in the next episode. Take care and see you soon. Bye-bye. TV KPM. Hello, I'm Padmanathan, son of Raja Ratnam, father of AJC, a student who is taking English literature. As I've heard from her, I understand that English literature requires extra effort from the student to research more about what they are learning. Though despite that, knowing she has an interest in it and the benefit of learning more about people in their yester years and how they express themselves, I do my part as a parent to encourage and motivate her to keep doing her best. As, I'm Azman bin Muhammad's father to Ryan Zafri Azman from SMK Amdil Marki, Kuala Lumpur of five Tamils. Uh, I'm very glad and happy when the uh, uh, SAB Kuala Lumpur uh, offered English literature as a subject for my uh, son's batch. Uh, since uh, he wants to take up laws after uh, finishing uh, his SPN, the skill of creative thinking and analysis, analysis of uh, prose, dramas, uh, and short stories that are taught by English literature uh, are very useful going forward for him. Furthermore, English literature allows students uh, um, to study li uh, literary texts uh, from the throughout history. Uh, this skills uh, will help my sons uh, later in his uh, degree level when he analyzes passages and facts relating to the discipline of law. My hopes for my sons, uh, Ryan Zephyr Azman, doing well for SPN, then he got a good results and especially in the English literature subject. Thank you to the teachers who's teaching him. Thank you.